other day I was watching the live action trailer to the Tokyo Revengers movie and the one character really caught my eye because he was wearing this custom knit piece that was just incredible and like I always do when I'm watching a movie or a TV show and I see a knit or a crochet piece I'm so intrigued and I always am trying to like look at how it was made and learn as much as I can from it. I'll put up some pictures of it on the screen so you can see. So I was doing some research about it and I found out it's actually a traditional piece of Japanese clothing called a haori. And so I was researching about the structure of it and what's super cool about it is it's basically made from all rectangular pieces of fabric. I found out that another anime that I really like has a haori in it, or several haoris actually, and that is the Demon Slayer anime. And the overcoat that Tanjiro and a lot of the other characters in the anime wear is actually a haori as well. So this sparked some inspiration for a new project I had in mind, and because checked patterns are so popular right now, I wanted to attempt to make Tanjiro's haori. So now I'm going to take you along the process of creating the pattern and researching as much as I could about the Howry. So this is the graph that I came up with to make the Howry and it's really simple. Basically, these are all going to be panels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11 panels you'll have total, and they're all knitted vertically, so rather than making individual squares, you're going to knit one square and then you're going to knit the next square, change colors, knit the next square, etc. And that's going to be, these long ones are going to be 12 squares long, and then your back piece, your middle back piece will be 6 squares long, and then these sleeves are each going to be 4 squares long and there's three panels per sleeve and then you seam them together in the end. Now I wasn't aware of this when I first made the graph for this pattern and that's because I had so much trouble finding the details of how the haori is supposed to be designed but it is supposed to have a center back seam going down here and because I only did five panels across for the back I couldn't do that center back seam. So what I should have done is made six panels going across rather than only five. And it wouldn't be too hard to do. I would just have to do smaller squares. So I would have to like cast on less stitches per panel for, and then do an extra panel to put in the middle. And then I could have that center back seam. So if you were to start at this panel, all you would do is get your green color or whatever color you're going to use and you're going to cast on 20 stitches and then knit 30 rows. And for me that gauge was perfect for a square and that was using 5.5 millimeter needles and a worsted weight yarn. Doing it this way with panels rather than knitting individual squares, it's going to save you so much time when you get to the end and you have to do all your seaming. Probably it would take me like 50% more time if I was to do it individually rather than just in panels. So this pattern is going to be really easy. All I'm going to do is just cast on 20 stitches, which is really easy, onto 5.5 millimeter needles. my first square and this one is going to have only 29 rows and that's because our first cast on edge right here which is this little stitches they kind of look like an extra row so we don't need to do the regular 30 rows and if you started with a wrong side or a purl row then this row should be or the next row should be a right side row or a knit row and then every time you change colors, it'll be a knit row. So you're just gonna add in your yarn. And 
every square after the first starting square should have 30 rows each. And then each time you change colors, you should change colors on a knit row. And when you get to the end of the row that has your tail of your other color, you're going to want to twist those two pieces of yarn together. So this is the old color. And I didn't cut this. And each time you get back to this end, you're going to want to twist those two pieces of yarn together. And that's just so at the end you don't have a million tails to tie in. to show you on the back here see this is what it looks like when you twist after every other round so just want to pull that looser that way your one side isn't just a little bit or a little less stretchy than the other side over here and then you can go ahead and just pick up that yarn and start knitting with it. And the only other thing that I wanted to mention is that for your final square, you're gonna knit 29 rows. And then for your 30th, 30th row is gonna be your cast off row. When I was trying to decide which way I was going to do the edging, I tried picking up stitches with my knitting needles from the back and then I tried it from the front and it just wasn't looking the right the way that I wanted it to look. So I ultimately ended up doing a crochet border and basically I just crocheted in every other row around the opening front and that ended up looking really nice. It's just half double crochets in every other row and then I just half double crocheted a few more rows until I got it to be the length that I wanted it to be. If you're not someone who crochets then you could always just do a knit border. It doesn't look too bad. I just couldn't figure out a way to make it look super neat. You would just have to pick up the stitches along the edge and then just knit them. You could do a garter stitch border or you could just do it in stockinette stitch and then just cast off whenever you feel like it's long enough. had quite a bit of trouble researching about the Howry. I could find tons and tons of information on the kimono and all the different variations about it, but for the Howry specifically, I actually couldn't find too many articles or videos just explaining all the different parts of it. However, there are about a million different sewing tutorials for the Howry, and those were greatly helpful. I'll put up a few of them on the screen just so you can see. However, I haven't sewn in probably about 10 years, and for me, the sewing tutorials felt like a foreign language. Every single time that they would flip the fabric over, I was like, whoa, this is way too much. I can't, <laughs> I can't pay attention. I... And I would just get so confused. So what really ended up helping me was some different graphs and also a few videos that I'll put up on the screen. 
Again, I'm not an expert on this. People spend years and years to become experts on kimono in historical Japanese clothing. So anything that I say, take with a grain of salt. Now for the neck band that goes all the way down from the bottom and then around the neck. Mine is about, I did it like two and a half to three inches wide and it's the same length all around. You literally just go around and around each row. There's no like, there's no shaping of it. It's just basically a giant rectangle. And this part is actually when you wear it, you're supposed to fold the neck in half. This is always done on the Howry, as far as I could tell. Just fold the neck band on half whenever you put it on. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be folded down here. I couldn't figure that part out, but that's what I learned so far from my research. And these ties on the Howry, they are called the Howry Himo and they are about seven to eight inches long. The ones I did, I basically just did like, imagine like a friendship bracelet. And it's just woven in that way. But I've seen that they can be beaded or you can use like any other kind of string that you want as far as I can tell. And then they're connected into the Howry by, I don't know if you can see, just like a little loop is right on the inside right past the neck band, like midway down right here. And then I had got these little metal rings to connect them and these can just open. And that's how you would open it. From what I've learned, the, the women's howry is usually supposed to be, rather than like unconnected with hoops or something. It's supposed to be untied. Now, I personally do not know a very good method to tying this square knot for the Harihimo, and it was very difficult for me to figure out, so I'm just gonna have to not be accurate in the untying part. Let me just show you the sleeves while I'm not wearing it so you can see better. So this is the end of the sleeve. This is going to be the bottom and that part is sewn together. And then this part is the opening. And I just did like a whip stitch all around the edge here. That was kind of just to make sure that my stockinette stitch lays flat and isn't too curled up because before it was like completely curling in like that. And I didn't really want it to look like that. I also ended up doing some steam blocking just so all my edges would lay flat and that is really what made it come together in the end. Now for the underarm I wanted to show you this. So this is the top and this is all sewn and then for the bottom this is sewn like half of the square a little under half of the square and then the rest of it is left open on this side, I believe. That's how it's supposed to be. And then for the underarm, under half of it is left open. So this is the square and it's sewn up to here. But if you, of course, if you need more room for your arms, just try it on as you go to see how much room you'll need for your armholes. And from what I could gather online, that was only done for women's haris historically. And that is because the obi belt that was worn by women, they wore it higher and it was bigger than the man's obi belt would be. So they needed that extra room in the sleeves to, so it wasn't like bunched up or you couldn't have any arm movement. For the neck band, I did all half double crochets just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds. And that was with a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And you just want to start with your half double crochets 
facing inward. So you're gonna start on the right side so that the right side of the first half double crochet is facing towards you. And then you can just work back and forth. If you're gonna want to knit this instead of crocheting it, then I would recommend to try it a couple different ways until you get this edge looking the way you want it to. And this is what my seams look like. These are the seams. This, of course, is just a color change from one square to the next. This is the baseball stitch, I believe it's called. And it's semi-reversible. Like, it doesn't look too bad on either side. Of course, it looks better on the right side, but it is not an invisible seam, but I actually really like that because you can kind of see the detail of it on whatever side is the opposite color of what you're using. So like that one, this one has the green thread and you can see it on the black side of the square. This one has black thread and you can only see it on the green side of the square. And I really like that detail. Also, when I steam blocked it, I folded this in half first and steam blocked it like that for the, this is the neck band, the very, top of the neckband and that's how it's supposed to be when you wear it so it's just a nice detail so it'll fold nice and easy So I think that's going to be it for this whole video. I had so much fun making this project and researching about the Howry. I think it is such an awesome piece of clothing and I'm so glad that people are wearing it as part of street fashion and that it's really making a comeback all over the world and especially in Japan. I would love to attempt to make another Howry someday. I might want to make the one that they have in Tokyo Revengers or do one that's like really more like Fair Isle style and really a lot a ton of colors because I think the possibilities are just endless for the Howry. And I can't wait to see if anyone else decides to make this project. Thank you so much for watching till the end. My name is Savannah. I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe this video and share it if you enjoyed. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them down below along with any questions that you have. And I will see you again very soon. Thank you and bye-bye.